<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cultural Awareness, the podcast that allow you to travel across the world. All of this from the backseat of your car, the comfort of your home, or maybe your neighbor house. Who knows? Wherever you are, welcome. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm your host, Dexter. All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this new podcast episode, man. This is again Big Steph, and because uh, today is a very special day, at least uh, for me, uh, I decided to not just talk about uh, anything traditional or anything like that. Everything, obviously, everything is going to always bring back to culture, cultural awareness. This is where you are. You know, you're in the right spot. Uh, obviously, we will always talk about culture, but today I just wanted to talk about life in general because the other day someone got me thinking, right? Somebody got me thinking, and how did he get me thinking? Well, uh, I saw this video, and I started wondering, like, man, what if there's multiple people out there feeling that way? You know how... You know, with this hard time with coronavirus going on, a lot of people are out there struggling, you know. These are very hard times. People are struggling. And I saw somebody so disappointed about this uh, 2020 year, you know. They obviously lost everything. I lost a lot too, but there are some people that probably lost even more. But... uh, I decided that I was going to make the video, you know, more about motivation, you know, to encourage people out there to strive for greatness, like LeBron James always says, you know, to kind of like fight back, you know, fight hard because it's not always going to be hard because there's every, there's every time for every, I mean, there's time for everything, right? There's time to be happy, there's time to be sad, there's time to laugh, there's time to cry, you know, especially if you're a big believer in God out there. So, I decided today to talk more about life. So, to get it started, where are you at right now in your life, right? Where are you at right now? Are you where you think you should be, where you want to be? Or is it something greater out there that you wish you could possibly achieve? Are you feeling like, you know, stuck? Like, you know, like you're stuck on the same place and, you know, nothing seems to be going right. Nothing seems to be going your way. You probably lost people. You, uh, I, I don't know, you lost a job. You, you lost home. You, you know, lost your uh You don't have any money and things like that. And you see, and the biggest thing, Why I decided to mostly talk about life is, uh, are you seeing all your friends succeeding in life this year? You know, people are succeeding and you feel like, you know, you're old and you, you, uh, you got back there and nothing seems to be going your way while everybody, uh, I guess fulfilling their dream and things like that. And you're wondering, what about me? Like, what is going on in my life? That could have been me, or that should have been me, you know. So I, I'm, I'm sure that some of some people out there are feeling that way. Cause sometimes I feel that way, you know. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, when I was in high school, I was playing basketball, right? I was playing basketball for Montclair Prep. I mean, we are the the school doesn't exist anymore. Actually, yeah, it might not exist anymore. But I was playing basketball for Montclair Prep. Never even thought. I will play football in my life, right? Never even it never even crossed my mind, which is crazy that I end up playing the NFL, but it never crossed my mind I will ever play football, right? So I was out there stuck and I was like, man, uh what is going on? Because I'm playing basketball and you know, I got a few scholarships here and there, but it's not where I wanna be. It's not where I love basketball, but sometime in life you have to make some sacrifice. And I was always getting uh, scared of getting hurt. You know, I was always scared of getting hurt in football. That's why football was never crossing my mind like that I would ever play it. Because I saw some people playing it, getting concussion, getting hurt or whatever. So then until the owner of my school... He said, hey, you need to kind of, you know, you're on scholarship. You got to help out with the with the football team because I was playing every sport. You can call it sport, I you name it, except for baseball. I could play soccer, basketball, 
football, volleyball. I remember we used to <laughs> we used to play volleyball to just have fun. But he told me like, hey, you need to maybe also help out with football team because they needed uh, a player right now. And now when I first started, when I lied to you, not I, I believe in the whole football team we may have been at most at most 16 players. You know, not that. Asians uh, are not good in football, but we have a couple of Asians that were just there to fill the roster, right? These are rich kids, you know, it's a private school. These are rich kids, so they were just there to fill the roster. So really, we had about, like, you know, at most maybe 12 players that could play ball, right? But we had, we had to add, you know, four more to make it to 16, so we can at least, in case somebody get hurt out there, you know, <laughs> in case somebody get hurt out there, we can put one of them in. I'm, we, I'm not trying to discriminate, but that is just my story, right? That is just what happened at Montclair Prep. So he ended up convincing me, and I ended up playing football. And sometimes that taught me a valuable lesson today because I, I was okay in basketball. I never knew I would be good in football until I tried it, right? My thing is, right now, you're feeling your life, you're feeling you stuck and all your friends are doing better than you. Try something new. One key word I always bring it to is passion because I try football. When I try football, I didn't immediately love it. I actually love football when I got in the NFL. Obviously, you would say the money is involved. Yes, but... It gave me, uh, in NFL, you have a lot more time, right? Once you got done with training and uh, meetings and everything like that, you're pretty much on your own. Like, you do whatever you want after that, right? You, don't get me wrong. I, I might make it seem like it's easy. It's not. Because sometimes you might get off meeting, especially in training camp, where you might get at home around like 11 p.m. and you barely have to sleep. And in the early morning, especially if you're a rookie, you have to come right early, and some of the vets were coming a little later. But, you know, obviously that was only for my first year. But my second year was way much better because I knew a little bit how, oh, we would leave early while some of the rookies also go to meetings and things like that. But uh, I played football in high school, played in college, and then ended up playing in the NFL. Yes, I blew my knee, you know, uh, on my third year or whatever, you know, blew my knee, blew my hip. You know, my rotating cough in my hip. So, yeah, it, it was tough time. But my point is, I tried something new that brought me a little bit, a step closer to my dream. My dream was always, you know, to all is to become a multi-billionaire, have multiple orphanages, be a philanthropist, help people, you know, providing shelter for people that don't have homes and things like that. So that is always my dream, and I still keep it in my mind because that is something I really want to accomplish. But how do you accomplish it if the main thing you thought was going to get you there is no longer in place? Like, for example, I thought by playing football, it will you know, bring me pro, I will make millions of dollars and that will help me to invest and be able to accomplish my dream. Well, I didn't, I never ever made a million, right? Because I went as an undrafted. So if you are undrafted, you don't make millions of dollars. So I never even made a million. But what I made got me to this point of my life, right? That is my point. I never made a million, but what I made got me to this point in my life. Why? Because I decided to try something new. And speaking of trying something new, so after I got injured, and uh, after my surgery and everything, it took me a year just to, like, first of all, when I had my surgery, it took me, what, three to four months just to walk, you know, if you, you know, just to walk, just to learn how to walk again. And after that, and, you know, things happen in life and everything, moving uh, back to, you know, Colorado and now Texas and everything, and keep it still trying, right, because you want to know what is it that you can do that will get you closer to your dream? And, you know, I was in Colorado. I was like, man, you know what? That will go ahead and try selling cars. So I started selling cars. Never sold a car in my life. <laughs> Never sold a car in my life. When I start selling car, guess what? Well, my first month, I believe I sold like... Uh, technically 10 cars plus 2. I won't forget it. Plus 2 uh list renew so that was 12 but they count like as far as car sold i sold 10 but then there were two lists renew and i was like huh because i saw the check i made i was like hey 
this might be a good thing, you know. And then I was like, hey, let, let me stick with this for f- just for a little bit because I was learning because I'm trying to find which which route is going to help me get close to my, you know, to my dream, either job or to my dream in life, right? So uh, my second month, I'm not a big fan of reading. So I usually like to listen to other people. I don't, I don't really, not because uh I don't think I have dyslexia. I don't think so. It just reading has never been part of me. Because if you ask my host mom, Lori, she would tell you that that boy doesn't like to read. You know, but you know, my dad would say the same thing. So, but anyway, uh, I, reading was never part of me. But I like to listen to people who have succeeded. So I was like, man, how come all this old ten car? Because you know coming from the NFL, you're still a competitor, you know, you still want to compete against other people because I saw 10, and the other dude, uh, he was, you know, the biggest seller, the Marcos, would never forget it, Marcos, and I was like selling 10, that dude sold like 21, I was like, damn, how did he double it like that, you know, he more than double it, I was like, I got to step my game up, so I went on YouTube, and one of my favorite all-time movie, I say all-time, is called the Wolf of Wall Street, right? So, and I started at looking at whose life story was based on, and I saw it was based on this guy named, uh, uh, how do you call it? Jordan Belfort. Hell yeah, Jordan Belfort. So I was like, let me Google. I never even knew he had that many videos on YouTube. So I went on YouTube and I started Googling it up and I saw Jordan Belfort. And man, I thought the movie was powerful. This dude is even more powerful, like, when you he- listen to him speak in person, and he was talking about how you can like uh, how you can make more sales, and he started talking about this thing called tonality, and you know he's like there's a way that not the accent I say tonality because I have an accent, but I need it, and I'm a big six foot seven, you know. 315 pounds so i knew for the get-go that a lot of people will feel kind of uh either scared you know offended by me just because of and i'm a black man right so i you didn't even have to guess yes i'm black so (laughs) so i'm six foot seven 315 pounds you know like you know like a mountain and i'm out here trying to sell car to people i wouldn't call people tiny but in front of me, they are a lot shorter, right? So I have to find a way to bypass all that to find, uh, you know, to be approachable, to smile and everything. And he started talking how you can speak a lot with your body language. You don't even have to say a word. You can just be like, hmm, what? Yeah. No, like things like that, you know, so and you can, so I started practicing and I started coming up with my own line and how to approach people or call people. I will make like, I believe I was making like 650 to 700 phone calls a month, right? Just so because I, I just got there and you, I don't know if you know how sales selling car was. When you get there, they give you the old crappy lead, right? That no one is looking at them anymore. And that's how I was able to, like, you know, my first month sold 10 car from all the, from all those crappy leads that nobody was looking anymore. Obviously, you have walking people that walk in and trying to buy a car, but those are rare. You have to find a way to get on phone call. So I was like, my second month, my goal was 15, right? My second month, my goal was 15, and I end up selling real sales, like, on my own. I end up selling 17 car. I mean, 17 car, and I was, man, uh, I, I was like the happiest kid on the block, you know, just because for me, it's all about like when you set a goal and you go and fulfill it and beat that goal, I was like, man, this is going to be amazing. And, you know, on my third month, I set a goal like, now nah, I, I need to be on Marcos level. I set a car, my, uh, I set the goal to 20, but then, you know, I ended up having to move to Texas before then, but before I left, I was already, I believe, at, uh, 10 car and I still and I was halfway through so I believe I will have reached it but my point is this you never know if you're good on t- at something until you try it you have to give certain things in life a shot stop looking at what other people are doing stop looking at what your friends are doing like people are succeeding around you and you're wondering what about me I'm too old I'm this finding excuses on why you are not succeeding is a waste of time. 
right? Instead, say, okay, here's where I am, and what can I do now? It's all about the now. Who care about what happened in the past? It's all about now. What is it that you are doing now that is going to project you or launch you forward? That is the thing. Right? Try something new. Who cares? I don't care if you're 50, 70. Try something new. What do you have to lose? Right? If you, it doesn't happen, well, well, at least you tried and it didn't work out. That's how life is supposed to be, right? We, this is a journey, right? You, you, it's not a... Some people say it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, right? So you find something that you can do that will help you get closer to your goal or your dream. Right? Who cares about, you know, such and such is succeeding and things like that? That is what I used to look at until I discovered, well, it doesn't bring you any peace. It doesn't bring you any joy. Instead, it brings you remorse. So don't remorse about anything. Yes, things happen. Like, am I going to regret the fact that I had two surgeries due to football? Hell no. Because it gave me some really, really happy time while it lasted. So I'm not going to complain about that. Now I just got to find something else that I can do. So I'm trying everything, right? I'm not where I need to be. I'm not talking to you as someone who was already successful or anything like that. But I mean, uh, like me and my boy Shane Verin, we used to say it in Colorado, I'm just a successful thousandaire, man. I'm not a millionaire, but I'm a successful thousandaire. So you got to find something that brings you joy, peace, love, you know, and something that you like and sometimes even if you don't like it try it you never know till you try it's like food right i used to be this skeptical about certain food now at least try it you know take a bite if it's not good then hey you try it and you didn't like it now you know you know what i mean so stop looking at what other people are doing and everything like that focus on you don't focus on you know winners focus on winning while losers focus on winners right Focus on you and you will win. Focus on how you can change your life today. Focus on that. How about that? Focus on how you can change your life today to be not only a better person, but to achieve your goal, right? What is success? Success is the definition that you make of it, right? So, uh, like I said, I started, and if you need some inspiration out there, go on YouTube, type Jordan Bareford. You will see his story and you will see how powerful this man, he, he, he speaks so well eloquently, you know, I'm, with my accent when I even say eloquent, <laughs> it might make you laugh, but he speaks so well eloquently and things like that. You, you will get motivated, especially if you are someone who doesn't like to read like me. I also like to hear about like people like Ray Lewis, obviously I, I played with the Raven. I got to meet Ray a couple of times and this dude, one day he came in practice. He would never know it had that effect on me. One day he came in practice and he was giving us that motivational speak. And he spoke so well that I was like, man, I feel like running through a wall right now, you know. So that you have to find somebody, you know. You cannot succeed, uh, you cannot succeed alone. Find somebody that will get you to that point. By get you, I mean, I'm not saying that will hold your hand, but I'm saying that will help you, that will lead you there. Like, you know, not everybody is a bomb. Uh, leader but hey you can also be a great follower like there's nothing wrong with following the right example there's nothing wrong with following a millionaire and becoming a millionaire yourself or oh, there's nothing wrong with following a billionaire and becoming a millionaire there's nothing wrong with that because guess what you guys are both successful find something like that and that make you happy and do it and sometimes it doesn't even have to make you happy it just has to do with the fact that you're trying something new and right now believe it or not I, I, i'm studying for something right now but i studied for something else and i just passed my uh, uh life insurance course i even went and took the test and I had like a 84%, you know, so I passed the tell you, I passed the course, which is to me, I'm like, man, what are you going to, what am I going to do with, you know, the license of selling life insurance? I was like, man, I don't know, but I did it. You know what I mean? Not be, I was trying to prove myself I can still study and go back to school. And so I started with something small which was to gain the life insurance. Now I know that, I could, hey, the brain is still there. You know, football didn't destroy anything. I'm still there. I'm still well alive and everything. So find something that motivates you and do it the way you want it to be done. No more remorse. 
be that new person today. Obviously, pray. I'm a big believer in praying, right? Because I believe in God. So, uh, I heard this story, and I would like to share it with you. So, someone told me, you know, I saw on YouTube, uh, he, he's an ex-Navy uh, SEAL guy, and he said, you have to decide who you want to be, how. He said, everybody got to believe in God. I don't care what you believe in, but there is a bit, something out there that is bigger than you after life. Right? And he said, he will hate, which is also me. So I will take it as me. I will hate having to walk to heaven. And God will be like, hey, Steph, since we're in a digital world, take a seat here. We have to talk. And let let uh, let uh, replay your life. And then he replays my life and he sees how, man, I started complaining a lot about, oh, I, I blew my knee, oh, I tore my hip, and I did, I did not succeed because of all those. I was supposed to be this and that. And he's like, man, that is not you. And then he go ahead and he replay a new story with an exclamation mark, or no, with an interrogation question, like with a question mark, on an empty picture, I, I believe everybody's seen those before where you have to guess who's behind the picture, right? And he starts saying, man, this dude tore his knee, he tore his hip. But somehow, this dude still fall hard. He found a way to become a billionaire, a philanthropist. He started helping people. He started, you know, providing shelter, donating money to uh, organization. Oh, man, like, man, that, that shit, I didn't know this dude was this sharp. I'm going to have to write some take some lesson down that is the and then he played the picture and he put the picture on the thing and it's you you are like but god i didn't accomplish all of that when did that I, that is not me and he said that is what i was that was what you were supposed to be that was who i meant you to be how come you didn't accomplish that because you let other things derail you from what you were supposed to be just because an accident happened in your life doesn't mean it's the end of your life maybe it happened because god is trying to put you on a different path on a path that you will be so successful that even you when you will look back to what you have accomplished it will scare the hell out of you that is what you're supposed to be so me personally that is the type of person i want to be who are you trying to be Ask yourself that question. While you're asking yourself that question, let's go to the quote of the day. Yo, boss, where is the commercial? We ain't got no, we got to work harder. Since we ain't got no commercial and we got to work harder, let's go out here and listen to uh, the quote of the day, right? And the quote of the day is this. Knowledge is like a garden. If it is not cultivated, it cannot be harvested. Knowledge is like a garden. If it is not cultivated, it cannot be harvested. You have to seek knowledge, my friend. Okay, if you do not seek knowledge and cultivate it, you will gain nothing and you cannot harvest anything. Thank you. Everybody, to go ahead and check out uh, Taste of Cameroon. In Plano, Texas, Dallas area, you know, if you are there, you know, call my boy at 818-814-0978, 818-814-0978 at Taste of Cameroon. It's a Cameroonian restaurant. They do it's a home base Cameroonian restaurant, and we can, uh, oh, they can make you try some really, really good fruit from Cameroon, you know, and it's all... Uh, I like to call it green food, you know, so everything is made from scratch, you know, there's no conservative, they make it the same day as you order, you order ahead of time, you call them, you make an order, and they make it right for you, you know, they have this amazing fish and uh, beans, the way they make the African beans is very different from the way uh, we are used to eat beans in America. And, uh, you know, they have a bunch of food, you know, where there's, like, green leaves and things like that. And, you know, pulled pork. Yeah, pulled pork. And they have a bunch of stuff, man. Go ahead and check it out for yourself. But go ahead. It's in Plano, Texas. If you are in Texas, right? Taste of Cameroon. Call them one more time. 818-814-0978. 818-814-0978. That is it for us, guys. And please... Keep checking out my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to 
my podcast. You know, we are on Twitter. I mean, what am I saying? We are on Spreaker. We are on Apple. We are on uh, Spotify. We are on iHeartRadio. We are on Amazon. We are on Google. So pretty much just find cultural awareness anywhere and you will find the podcast. My IG is bstef 77 and my uh, Twitter is at NimbusDefan. So go ahead and check me out and and please feel free to leave comment and we will really appreciate it. Thank you. God bless. Peace. Big Steph.